Welcome to the Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Beth. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Um, seriously, anything and everything. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it before it was mandated. Uh, it's the only way we can do the show. Um, I probably need to stop saying that because it's like, why yeah. continue to point out the fact that we're literally never in the same spot? Somebody the other day asked me like, hey, do you have a solution for recording live and in person? And I was like, no. Mm. I've been thinking about that because of potential Jeep safari, potential <laughs> in-person recordings. It's like, I guess you just do the mic pass and <laughs> well, like I my fancy microphone that you can't see has the like omni directional thing. So like we oh. could set it in the center. Mm. But like that means you're getting everything though. So too much. <laughs> too much. It's Nobody wants to see much. it all. No. 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 <laughs> Nobody wants to see how the sausage is made. Uh, anyway, I'm still in the Midwest. Ross is still in the Northeast. And Beth is in Good Tennessee. Guy. Sweet. Um, where do you want to start, Ross? Where do you want to go? I guess we'll start with the news. Just tackle the news right <laughs> quick since there's not much. We're going to start with yet another EV. Yet another EV. Uh, the GMC Hummer. The first edition of the Hummer that's the size of uh, a normal Hummer, but inflated by another 25% needlessly. Deliveries, or at least shipments, are starting. Um, and I put a note in here to hide your children because it weighs, what do they say, 9,000 pounds and has. Is it 9,300? 9,300. 9, well, I don't know. It's, it has too much power and it's too heavy and it's too big and it crab walks. So it, it will, you know. 9,046. Great, great. They should have just released it around Halloween because <laughs> it, that's just terrifying. So it yeah. is still big. It is. It's so somebody said like the, the deliveries right before end of the year put it. Was that last week when we talked about put it in the running for like truck of the years type stuff? Technically, yep. Motor Trend because it was being delivered in the 2021 calendar year. That means they can have it in the running but they don't they they're delivering like 17 of them well like no one's actually tested it right um i I think a few people have had their hands on it but i don't nobody's done like a real road test with it yet probably because they're still trying to expand the size of the roads to fit it but (laughs) sorry (laughs) low hanging fruit (laughs) yeah but i don't know what's the oh no just american access again and we're going in full circles i'm I'm... see but it's still narrower than a ram trx and that is just the most needless vehicle to ever be built i'm I'm typing really fast i want to make a point (laughs) (laughs) google faster get that shorthand (laughs) right come on google read my mind (laughs) Oh man, I'm kind of worried about when they can start doing that. It is a tenth of an inch wider than an H1 Hummer. Okay. Which so that's is... our that's our joke for the Ram TRX is it's 1.4 inches wider than our H1 Hummer, which we all imagine as being the widest thing ever because it's huge. This thing's only a tenth wider. So it is wide, still like it's the same point, reference point wider than an h1 hummer but it's not to the extreme that the trx is i don't have anything else to say about this <laughs> we we want to drive That's it a, yeah of course we want to drive it but whoever can uh, put a hummer ev next to a rivian r1t or r1s i don't care i'll drive either or um, what, what did your phone auto correct it today to r1 twinning oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wrote out the phrase Rivian R1T winning and then uh. finished with Motor Trend Truck of the Year, but it took R1T and winning and tried to slam it together. Like Grammarly kept saying, you, you mean twinning, right? I was like, no, I don't mean twinning. <laughs> R1T space uh, winning. Like I that's, typed it correctly. Anyway, it's just that's funny. My robotic overlords know what's best for me, I guess. Yeah. Skynet's coming. Anyways, <laughs> uh, moving on. So the next bit of news is the Bronco was crash tested by the IIHS, and it did. What What are you eagerly trying to say? I don't know. I just, oh, I, it made oh, me excited like, just to see oh, your face. Yeah. Chris, Chris <laughs> is getting so <laughs> about the Bronco getting slammed into a wall. Uh, I was waiting for the shoe to drop. <laughs> the shoe to drop is that it's better than the Jeep. Shocker. 
and worse than a normal SUV. Shocker. So yeah, the, the big downfalls are the headlights are really bad. They said the headlights are effectively terrible at lighting around any kind of corner. And they said the head restraints and the relation to headrest and seat back is poor. So there's excess whiplash in a any kind of incident. So it's, it's, it's still good, you know? It's just not better IHS, than a Jeep, but good. not good. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Pro tip, don't crash Which, one. Isn't that exactly what Ford was shooting for? Slightly better than a Wrangler. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then, well, they probably weren't shooting for not good. For No. Life, but no. It is nice to know it's slightly better than a Wrangler. Like, oh, It has curtain air. It has side airbags, which you cannot get on a Jeep except for the front row. This is curtain right. airbags. So I'm that not- should help it not uh playing the video but this is this is the impact image that yeah that's a small front overlap crash test uh where it's like that very corner three quarter spot yeah. which is the hardest one to do well in and i think it it did well i think it got a good rating on that which is that you know that's the scary one that's the oncoming traffic it's the it's so. the oncoming traffic clips you and then you move <laughs> diagonally from that impact normally normally in some kind of rotation, but so these, so, uh, yeah, they always make me think of Volvo XC90 crash test videos. Oh, uh, what about the, when Volvo debuted automatic braking and it didn't auto brake and it slammed into the back of the truck? I don't remember that one. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. They had like a whole bunch of people in a stadium at a track and they were oh no debuting automatic braking. And the car was doing 15 or 20 miles per hour. And it was supposed to come to a stop as it approached the stop vehicle in front of it. And it didn't break and it just slammed right into it. Oh, no. <laughs> Fluids everywhere. That was uh, so good. Someone, please tell me they had a camera on the crowd, though. Who <laughs> just like, that's what you need the reactions uh, of the- There should uh, have been. I don't know if there was, but I, I think the silence- A lot of head shaking. The silence <laughs> from the crowd afterward <laughs> told Paul. They like flew out yeah. all these journalists and it's just- oopsies well uh, yeah well man my so, google skills suck tonight that's okay that's there the had to be an image of it. so the ones I, the tests i were talking about was like they 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 would do all these standard tests but then they would do like the european end car tests and there was one where they launched it like sideways out of like a warehouse at an angle at like 30 miles an hour so literally the front set of wheels caught and then it was just constant rollover test Oh, I 30 or 40 seconds. Vaguely remember what you're talking about. And it looked like at the time we only had three kids. Um, <laughs> we now have four, but it just, oh. but <laughs> at the time I was like, that's, that's the best thing I've ever seen because it looked like in a rollover test at 30 miles an hour, nothing happened to the cabin, like all the airbags deployed. And then everybody just rolled on pillows <laughs> That's like the uh, the Fast and the Furious crash test, or the Dukes of Hazard crash test. <laughs> Every crash test where they just launch giant feet into the air and then yeah. land trophy truck style <laughs> it's and fine. 60s chargers. No, yep. yeah, no. Volvo still has me sold. Like I would buy an XC90 to put everyone in. Also, the, that's a lasting impression. Talking, yeah, like they have seats that are designed to move with you and lessen. Like they break different anyway i it's about to be an xc90 psa and i already know ross is going to tell me not to buy one so yep uh, can confirm (laughs) since ross no longer works for volvo we're good (laughs) exactly (laughs) no disclosure agreements there exactly no you don't have to sign an nda to work at the dealership that's true yeah you were at the dealership that's true Uh, there probably are some deal anyways uh yeah (laughs) final piece of news before we move on to the fun stuff is ford has applied for the Maverick Tremor trademark in Chile, but there's nothing really else. This is, this is an auto blog story that came out today. So we know that they're doing Tremor across the line for their between standard truck and Raptor versions. So there's a Tremor F-150, there's a Tremor Ranger, and they're all very good. So now they are talking about doing a Maverick Tremor, which would be fantastic because as of now, the most off-roady Maverick is the FX4, which is not very off-roady. So there's not really much in this report other than that the name was applied for. 
So that's uh, that's really it on this front. So yeah, hopefully more Maverick is better Maverick. Sure. Yeah, they look fun. I don't know. I, I like the Maverick. I, I like the stripe packages that some people hate. On the stripe tremor. packages? Oh, uh, yeah. uh, like the red and black stripes. Like I think they look they're good. okay. They're okay. I mean, it's not fantastic. The uh, the Ranger Splash came up in conversation today, as it should always. Actually, I think who's picking? I want to know who's picking all the names. Whose job is that? Well, the splash was from the nineties. It That's was true. like That's old school. Six or mm-hmm. seven. Light Lightning was first because that was like what ninety two. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, ninety one or ninety two. Splash, Tremor. This actually looks okay. This truck on the screen right now. Yeah, yeah I the, like it. The stripes yeah. work in this, but because there's other stuff going on. <laughs> should, I should share the picture of the snorkel one I sent you the other day. <laughs> snorkel? Did you not? It, I sent it to your Instagram. I don't know if you got it or not. It was not weekend, so. Have not. They're Instagramming. Some somebody sank a, uh, a Toyota Hilux while they were launching their boat, and the only thing popping out was the snorkel. And I was like, <laughs> It was like for sale over to Hilux. Uh, <laughs> that's never, funny. Never seen snow. Oh, that's really <laughs> funny. Um, on that note, Beth, does that bring up memories of going to rescue Kevin out in Utah? Yes, it does. I was going to say, I have experienced that firsthand. <laughs> I know that's a sore subject for him, but. Yeah. That's one we'll always remind him of. Part of a crazy adventure. Just like yes. the, the time I was in the river, every time. Somebody who was on that trip sees me. They're like, hey, remember that time you got stuck in the river? Yeah, I do. Like, yeah, it, just, I guess it's, you know, it's so out of the ordinary. You really can't, can't beat that. It just sticks with you for your, mm-hmm. for your story, unfortunately. I don't, I don't want to be one of those guys who's constantly in the river. I just don't. <laughs> what if you, really well, then like you have to top boats. it. You have to do something that is not riverish that's going to be memorable. So that's really a challenge more than anything else. Or you or. egg somebody on to do something. <laughs> more questionable like oh, oh yeah, I, just just go like get i like how else. you're passing the buck there you just yeah, gotta get yeah. your buddy <laughs> it's wingman <I> style <laughs> see my my guys don't roll like that they'll still like the thing that you did sticks <laughs> with you just because you get somebody else to do something stupider yeah. like it yeah no you're still the guy like yeah yeah now that day I well and then you're the only then you're one in. stuck in the river <laughs> then you are twinning you're the river guy and so <laughs> the mud guy you know what i mean like this is how exactly. it works <laughs> exactly so speaking of uh, new friends, Ross, <laughs> you have a, you a, have a GX. I have a GX, and uh, there I don't want to say anything concrete just yet, but there are new partners that have joined in on the project, and should make it even uh, even more exciting. You for, said concrete, and I wanted to make concrete jokes about you, Alexis. But okay, let's go. <laughs> I got nothing. I, oh. <laughs> I, Speaking of being stuck in the mud, I like. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, also, yeah, you so... haven't posted pictures of your GX in, ever to Instagram. Oh, really? Oh, oh. You have screen cap after screen cap of this show. <laughs> That's <laughs> all it's good for. <laughs> the, the last vehicle that belongs <laughs> to you that isn't a press vehicle only belonged to you for a couple of weeks. Oops. The rest is on his TikTok. You're not watching yes. the right Oh thing. my God. There you, I, go. there you go. Well, I'm avoiding that like the plague. So <laughs> <laughs> my kids are not, but I'm avoiding it. So. Uh, uh, yeah. So no, the, the good news so, is Ross has partners. Yep. I yep. have a firm partner. Oh, um, you do? That, oh, that's great news. Yeah. Well, you also have Vrenstein. Vren- that that's who I was talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. I blew up your spot. Sorry. I'm not mad. So I've been talking about it for weeks on here. I bought a Suburban. It had 22s and Michelins. Fantastic tire. I hate 22s. I thought the worst part is I made this change and my wife went, I liked it better with the old tires. Oh, <laughs> guess you got to put, you know what? Actually, did you sell those yet? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, okay. Never <laughs> yes, oh, did. no, wait a minute. The Sequoia is a five log. <laughs> They're gone. Yeah, I was going to say put them on the Sequoia, but. Yeah, five Sequoia is five lug. Um, but no, so oh my gosh, where are all my oh wait, I did it on Hooniverse. I did it on Hooniverse. You did all my images on are on Hooniverse. I wrote an article, <laughs> I did a thing. <laughs> Jeff liked Actually, me for a day. <laughs> there are pictures of the GX on ATV Rider. Okay. From a few weeks back. But we can and of course my internet has ground to a halt again. 
Uh, so <laughs> anyway, I had 22s. I had Michelins. I bought a set of um, Chevy OEM Z71 wheels uh, off a local guy, which was very nice. Um, I had to drive pretty far to meet him. He didn't exactly go halfway. How far? Um, because I'm looking at possibly picking up a set of wheels this weekend. And uh, it's not it's not close. It was only an hour. Oh, yeah. You Every, should, uh, everything here is like 30 minutes at least. So you should let me call him because Zach says I have magic touch that I do all the deals now and people come to me. <laughs> and so, they come to you. you. So, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Next time. All right. <laughs> that's on the hook next bargaining there you go. Uh, yep. now but now the secret's out so never will know that's right. the problem, so. <laughs> I, I would i would say our audience is vast uh, yeah it it's it's good it's healthy but it's not i think we're safe i think we can definitely con a couple of guys to come <laughs> to us so this is the suburban this is it over the summer in montana yakima box on top the 22s the michelins did great great highway tire um the thing that just been driving me crazy that I've talked about a number of times is the front air dam. I've trimmed it. Um, it is no longer as long as that was because this this air dam on uh, the road to this cabin scraped like four times, like turn it and it just drive me. And I know it's not doing any damage to the truck at all. It was just in my brain, drove me nuts. So that got trimmed up. I think I even have a picture of it. Yeah, that's what it was. This is what it is now. Um, it's going Give to it get even better because. Uh, I'm looking at leveling kits. Also, that was the back of the Suburban once we got back from Montana. Mm -hmm. So four kids in the car for 40 plus hours. Um, I did clean in between. But anyway, update time. I grabbed these 18s. Uh, Regstein uh, partnered with me <laughs> to, to put their uh, Pinza ATs on it. Uh, I think Regstein's from the UK. Man, I probably should have done more research before I finally talked about them on the show. Um, the, the person who approved my uh, partnering with them was a UK email. Um, there, I 100% I know they're a UK company because I was watching the English Premier League the other day and one of the ribbon boards banners was for Regstein. So which, uh, that was like, if they're advertising the Premier League, they can't be nobody because uh, those, those advertising dollars are not cheap. So, um, but put them on and then we had an impromptu trip come up. And the next thing I knew... We were in the snow in the Rocky Mountains. We went to we went to see some family over a long weekend. And um, the things that I was looking for with this tire specifically was like I've had KO2s. I've had Toyo Open Country AT3s. I think you had AT2s. No, they're AT3s. I they're know they're, AT3s? I know they're AT3s. Yeah. Okay. Um, both a great tire off-road. On road, they're okay. Considering it's a full size suburban, as much as I want to go rock crawl on that thing, it is not ready for that whatsoever. I was really looking for an all terrain tire. Really, I wanted more sidewall and I wanted a reinforced sidewall. So if I do go play in the rocks, I'm not going to hopefully cut everything. Now, I do understand that rocks will cut everything no matter what. It doesn't matter what tire you take. But at least in this scenario, I have kind of taken a step forward to prepare myself. Um, they were great in the snow. Uh, we were up to like 10,000 feet and it snowed <laughs> only on the drive up. And then once we were there, like they were snow on the ground the whole time, obviously, but um, great in the snow, great on the highway. There is, there's minimal added road noise. When you, when I threw the Toyos on the Sequoia, I heard them immediately. When I threw the KO2s on the Land Cruiser, I heard them immediately. These, I put it on the truck and I, I maybe I can hear them. I, if I really focus on it, I think I can hear a difference. Hmm. But most of the time, I'll turn the podcast on and I can't hear anything. So, um, how quiet are your kids in the car? Because I want to know: can you hear anything anyway with four children in the car? So, <laughs> as a mother, this, this brings up a fantastic point. Um, <laughs> this suburban is equipped with uh, 4G LTE Wi-Fi and. Life two saving. dvd screens so they all have headphones they all have their device like there's i can't remember what insurance company it was but it was like the dad uh driving and everybody else had headphones in and it was an absolutely quiet commercial that's my life sometimes sometimes <laughs> the best part is is when one of them talks they all talk way too loud because they can't hear themselves because of the headphones so yes. instead of them talking they shout and i'm like all right well we'll get over it um but no it was it was great the suburban still fantastic for 
long road trips. Um, I didn't, I know when I went to Montana, I said, I saw like 19, uh, a couple of times from the mountains to God, where'd we stop for gas on the way back? I filled up in the mountains and then I stopped again for gas in Goodland, which is that that's a drive. Like you, I cleared Colorado before I got gas again. Um, it was at 22, but I really was leaning on like the 26 that I got headed out. Mm-hmm. Um, you but also like six in that headed out people. Well, when you're coasting, yes. <laughs> okay. So but people, in, people in and around Denver and on I-70, all of those posted speed limits are merely suggestions as, as much as even I'm like 10 over and I'm like, we're hustling. And there's somebody <laughs> on my butt and I'm like, you're not hustling enough. So mm-hmm. like, for semis doing 55 in the far right lane to guys just doing whatever they want in the left lane. It's, I will say uh, the Sequoia in the mountains had the adjustable uh, suspension. You could change it from like comfort to sport or whatever. And there's like one setting in between. This has the, the magnetic ride shocks. I kind of wish I had one little, like one turn for a little weightier suspension on some of those corners in the mountains with ledges right next to me. Like, it felt a little floaty. I know it's not sports suspension. Uh, <laughs> you also went up quite a bit in the sidewall, which is going to make it feel yeah. like it floats and on the sides a little more. And that's probably, I, I probably need to add like two PSI to each tire. It's, That'll help. Uh, yeah, like for the long road trips like that. So anyway, that's my update. Actually, cool. that's the thing I've been talking about. Huh? I said, I love a good Suburban. I do too. I just need to get rid of the rake to mm-hmm. the front and I will be content. And I'm working on that. I've sent emails. People have responded. Yes. Exchanges. <laughs> You've, you exchanges are occurring. Exchanges. <laughs> Multiple exchanges. We'll find out who really wants it. No, I. Oh, <laughs> we had a, a mint green one for a while. That is the exact same color as like the forest service yes. and so uh when i would go to the park to photograph people would stop me all the time and be like excuse me do you know where this is in the park and I'm like oh yeah just go down that road just keep going and you'll find it <laughs> that's because you know the park yeah. but it was i was like i am not a professional <laughs> yeah if there's a bear please don't call me <laughs> so, right. not, like a little there. yellow badge on your on your jacket and like a brown hat that's right just say yeah i just wear my rebel gear it looks professional <laughs> That it does. Your guys' yeah. bears aren't too big. Yeah, that's true. They're black bears. I mean, they're still angry. They will still, you know, that was, so uh, this still mess you up. Okay. Year, years ago, I had seen literally in weeks' time, I was in Colorado in a cabin and had two black bears walk onto the porch to like chug the uh, hummingbird feeder sugar water. <laughs> We're like, all right, so we got to put that away. Yeah. And then like three weeks later, I was in Tennessee for work and we had an off afternoon. I was like, let's. Let's go for a hike. We're right next to Smoky Mountain National Park. Let's go. And on that hike, I saw a mama bear and three bear cubs. So like, I'd never seen bears before. Saw two, <laughs> and then two weeks later, saw four. And I was like, "Holy crap!" Like, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to Montana and saw none. <laughs> I'm good. You can keep them. Yeah, Both I'm good. I, I don't like bears. No, 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 definitely not. We went hiking a couple of years ago, and it was like fresh 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 snow and the only tracks in front of us on the trail were just huge bear prints and we got to that point and we were far enough that it was like the main road was equidistant from the parking lot we had come from and it's like do we turn around and make a run for it or just keep going oh god oh there it was sorry what and it I'm searching for the Great Suburban oh yeah uh, it's probably on Zach's Instagram that that's where I went and I just saw <laughs> picture how, of daughter in suburban how long did you have that one that was brief yeah not a year definitely not a year um six months maybe yeah. but he he did a lot of work to that in six we months. Did. <laughs> and that's, that's why i didn't last that long <laughs> Kept, I, needed work. <laughs> I literally found a who wants a suburban post so <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that was a cool truck it, it was a cool truck though i liked it a lot um well and it's See, this is the part that they don't make anymore. It's the 2,500. Yep. They don't make the three quarter ton Suburbans anymore. So like the last year of that is 2013, which is why if you can find a 2013, 2,500, they want 60 grand. And you're like, what? Mm-hmm. 
I can't justify that. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah. have Wi-Fi. <laughs> cool truck though. Beth, yeah. what is your favorite of all the, the between the two of you, you've gone through quite a number of vehicles over the years. What is your what's your what are your favorites? Any highlights? Oh man, it's hard to remember them all, honestly. <laughs> That's what my wife would say. And we've gotten through about a quarter as many. Yeah, no, it is hard. I mean, I really love our um, 67 Mustang right now. Um, That has probably been one of my absolute favorite cars we've had. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a good one. Let's see. Yeah, it's just good. And I like the noise it makes. And it's moving. Yeah, like. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah, I drive it. You know, I go pick up our daughter from school in it. <laughs> and I feel, I feel cool <laughs> until I like scare the other teachers. And I'm like, sorry. Oh, man. That's I really so thought it was a neutral. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's probably been one of my absolute favorites. Um, you know, I the Miata we had was not a cool car in any way. It was just an NC Miata, but we used it so much to just cover ground i mean i think we did cross country several times in it we went up to maine in it and so it was a great tool um and it was the first car i think that i ever had that truly felt like it's my car i love it i want to do stuff with it um the good cars to fall in love with yeah yeah so that was great um you know uh there's definitely been some that are memorable (laughs) that maybe (laughs) Um, I don't know. They, mm. I still loved our Terra too, our Scout Terra. <laughs> um, okay. I was actually uh, here. We go, a little, a little blue. Yeah, that's yeah. the uh, that's the million mile Miata. I don't think that's actually the million mile. I think that's oh. the other blue we had. Oh really? Oh my gosh! <laughs> because there's no dent on the side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am. Um, but yeah, our, our scout, um, Zach actually proposed me on the, the, in the scout, um, to Miriam. So that was kind of sad when that left, um, sentimental. Yeah. Yeah. A little sentimental, but it was good. And now, of course, now I'm like, man, we should have kept the scout prices <laughs> have gone up. <laughs> Seriously. Oh man. Yeah. Good, um, ones are, good ones are bring a trailer specials these days. Yeah. So that, that stings a little bit. I'm like, we could have made money even on the parts scouts we had. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think those are those are some of the the ones that come to mind. Um, I had a horrible first motorcycle that also kind of sticks to mind. It was a CB, uh, it was like a '70s CB 400F. Um, beautiful waterfall pipes. Needed a lot of work and was a horrible first bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is really cool. So I think between the two of us, Chris and I know. Uh, maybe three things about motorcycles. Okay. Um, but that is a crazy looking bike. Those... It is. It's cool. Um, and that's why I bought it. Like, I think actually uh, Zach was on a trip and Kevin came with me. I couldn't ride a motorcycle. So he oh came my. with me to buy it. And Kevin was like, I do not think you should buy this. And I was like, I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> was that example terrible or the bike itself is a terrible bike? The bike itself was was pretty rough. Um it just needed a lot of work and really need to be completely stripped down. Um, but, uh, like the clutch, the clutch was so stiff that I literally could not grip it with one hand. I had to do like a two hand, what? Clutch, which doesn't work when you're riding a motorcycle. Um, no, no. the also, shifter fell off a couple of times while I was riding it. It was just, yeah. We've had a lot of conversations recently that circle around the same point, which is the most fun vehicles are the ones that you can just use and that don't yes. always put up a fight or, you know, die 1200 miles from where you're supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's, you know, a sweet spot of making it your own and, you know, you, you, you want to, some certain old things need stuff and that's okay. Um, but there's always, I don't know, I, I do kind of believe in the like certain vehicles have a personality and a willingness mm-hmm. and if they're not willing, then they should go away um after a certain point you know it's not fun yeah. anymore yeah um so yeah i've uh i've gotten rid of three of those in the last year oh, no. <laughs> what about you guys though what was is are there cars that stand out that you've had above others the miata yeah. definitely i still don't fit in those yeah but you're uh, yeah I, I fit in everything you don't know yeah, you're because you're normal size normal size <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely the miata is my top of my pedestal 
I, wow. I had an 05 Lexus LX 470. Yeah. I can yeah. never remember which, which digit comes after the four. Uh, if you just say LX, yeah, you, you clear yourself of having to guess. I had, a, I had that in a 94 Land Cruiser. And the 94 Land Cruiser mm -hmm. was amazing, but it was just not quite what I needed. Mm -hmm. And I kind of miss the LX. Yeah. But we just, it just didn't, it wasn't the right time for us. Um, and I don't think it was the right LX. That one had some weird. I think that's someone like, too. Ghosts like, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's just that particular car or mm -hmm. the time that you have it just isn't right, you know? Um, oh, for yeah. sure. I had a Forerunner a few years ago that I, I should have kept. There was nothing that said I should have gotten rid of it, and I got rid of it, and, you know, wrong time in life. Perfect yes. vehicle. So wrong you time bought a fancy ass forerunner <laughs> yeah but that the last the one i'm talking about i had four years ago so right different time of life that was the but the last fifth gen right only fifth gen yeah okay mm -hmm. that was the one i was imagining when you said i got rid of it and i should know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the stormtrooper had to go dude no sway bars. oh god <laughs> oh my god uh, some of the thinking about how much time i spent on that to sell it like i there's years of my life that are gone <laughs> just from working on that stupid thing but hopefully it's it is taking care of its new owner or at least whoever bought it off of me didn't you say so, what a different country haiti that? Yeah, yeah he was bringing it to haiti because yeah. his family lived somewhere where there were no paved oh. roads and he was like they have to drive through rivers to get to town like to the doctor it so, sounds like oh. the correct vehicle to purchase your family yeah, or to drive through Solid. Kansas. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not the right vehicle to drive through Kansas. That was a joke about your little river fiasco. Oh. So, well, <laughs> bringing it back. <laughs> Technically, in Kansas, dry riverbeds are public byways. Mm. It just wasn't dry. It wasn't the right vehicle. <laughs> I almost got it. That was that. a mid drink. I know, it was almost mid drink. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, the thing the thing I've been looking at lately, I've been sucked. I wanted a lot of Neva, and you can find them incredibly cheap in Europe. It's just shipping in the entire world right now has gone so ridiculous. Hey, that what you would spend on the vehicle would be six times higher to get it here. Camille claims he has a guy. Well, there are Baja bugs in the states. That's what we need to do. No question. That's. Even I, Sam would even Sam would be on board with that. And I have finally figured out the difference between a regular beetle and a super beetle just by looking at them. And I know we want to avoid all super beetles because they have McPherson front struts and you can't lift it. Mm -hmm. So we want a regular beetle. Regular beetle. Regular beetle. Portion my, engine. <laughs> my aunt had a uh, a bug that she would drive to our family cabin in the 60s. <laughs> amazing that's, that's so it's good. on like seven miles of fire road <laughs> that might be one of the most 60s sentences i ever heard <laughs> and then my uncle had a a charger that he did that with too he would just but the bug just, always made it right yeah yeah I did. yeah there's a reason they run them in class 11 in baja like they're yeah <laughs> not wrong yeah I, really why one is a 356 <laughs> porsche but i cannot afford that <laughs> and never will be able to so bug bug yeah actually sedona really drove home the bug sire she brought it back up saw that. She, yeah, yeah when she when she and her her man redid that one i was like mm, mm, that, that thing was freaking cool so and it, there are a lot nearby and there are a lot of people that have finished projects and i just want to be like i'm not no that's not me like yoink yeah like no that's not right like <laughs> yep i don't want i don't want a um, plastic dipped bug no. I was going to say, can you buy a finished product and then not mess with it yourself? Because I don't oh. think that's a thing. I feel like every time I, yeah, I'm gonna I hear, a, you know, a car person be like, oh, it's it's done. You know, it's good. I got it. Someone else bought it. And no, that's not the case. Never. I, I, I do want one that's like <laughs> halfway. Like if you've done all the engine work, let's talk. And I'm not really opposed to having to sure. rebuild a VW engine because... It seems to be the easiest engine to rebuild. And I you can lift it out of too. the car yourself without a hoist. My favorite is the the video of the guy 
taking off and putting on the single belt with that's the screwdriver. Nice. That's amazing. I love that video. <laughs> it's, it's like so three good. seconds off and on, and the engine so runs the entire time. It doesn't care. It doesn't care. And you're like, I need this in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I need to have a screwdriver launched in my face. That's right. <laughs> so anyways, let's talk fun, exciting stuff. So how was Rebel? That, so first time. <laughs> Right. First time rookie. Yeah. Rookie. It was hard. Surprise. That's what. <laughs> so, but you are of the ilk how, how of, much? No, hold on. I, I want to do this because <laughs> I, I don't think the navigators get enough praise here because I, it, it still looks like black magic to me. You look at a topographic map and you're like, <laughs> now I know where we're going. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Well, here's the secret it is that is it's just it's just magic that's all we we all just do magic spells and that's it no. and i knew gps was lying to us <laughs> if only if only uh yeah no it is um i had never navigated in that way before you know um obviously i've done off-roading and camping and hiking and different stuff and um was familiar with everything but never never to that extent and it was uh, a whole new level of sorcery <laughs> <laughs> um not for the faint of heart for sure um but it's also really um i don't know you you look at it and you're like well why haven't i learned this my whole life like it's so useful <laughs> why don't we all get trained on how to do this and um chris we're seeing your, your home screen yeah <laughs> sorry oh, <laughs> I, I picked the right one and everything <laughs> uh, yeah it's like why don't they teach us how to read a map in grade school yeah yeah and actually one of the uh, rebels was from alaska and apparently they do in alaska they teach you how to do all the orienteering in alaska in school that state tracks. tracks who knew right <laughs> <laughs> so that would be handy um but yeah that's a lovely one of my favorite pictures of me <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the joy of the rally is it's all photos are legal. <laughs> um, so, so what kind of prep did you do? How much like studying and, and mental planning and actual physical planning went into it? Not enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I did a great actually intro to nav course with REI. That was just like an in-person course with an instructor. And that was great. Just um, kind of getting you in that mindset and um, my instructor had really great tips about like always paying attention to your um, handrails and your backstop so on your map what are you passing that you know you're on course and then what is when you've got to you know you have gone the wrong way mm. um, so that was a super great tip and then uh, Abby um, Bassett and I who is my driver and teammate um, and sanity coach uh, <laughs> We did a little bit of everything. Um, we did a course together through the Rebel. They did a Rebel training. So we did a four-day course on both driving and navigating together. And that was the only training we had in person together in the car. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brutal. That's that's a lot to go into. Yeah. Into the rally. It was because, you know, there's a lot more than just can you can you do the skills? It's like, can you do them together? Can you communicate together in a way that makes sense to your driver or um, any of that? And so luckily, I mean, I think Abby and I really lucked out in that one. We did know each other beforehand. Uh, we've been friends for years and um, but you never know. Like, is that going to hurt you or is that going to help you? Right. right. <laughs> um, are you at each other's are, We are still friends. Or? We okay. are still friends. <laughs> Um, so is and that then, why she didn't come on the show tonight? No, <laughs> no, no. Um, at least I hope so. Maybe you know. <laughs> she blamed me. Maybe she doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so Abby was very patient with me uh, figuring things out, and uh, and and vice versa. Abby had never driven off road like that before. Um, you know, she had done press launches. Um, but there's someone with you telling you what to do. It's not just like 10 days nonstop in um a Porsche Cayenne. <laughs> <laughs> good connect. Yeah, that was a, um, a good choice of vehicle, by the way. I know there was probably a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. No coordination, we but <laughs> yeah, no, it um honestly the vehicle truly did surprise me. Um 
you know, I haven't spent a lot of time in Porsches before, honestly, and I did not know what to expect. And I was like, eh, this is not, I mean, anywhere we would go in training, we trained, um, we did some dune training and uh, we were up in the middle of nowhere with the dunes having lunch. And these guys came up on ATVs and were like, that's your car. What is it doing here? <laughs> They're like, yeah, we got a little dune flag out there. And like, awesome. hey guys. <laughs> um, no, but it, it it performed fantastically. Um, we had really no issues at all, which was surprising. So, um, no no vehicular issues. No uh, vehicular issues. We heard <laughs> we heard some battles against the elements overnight one night. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So someone asked me if um, the rebel was as hard as I thought it would be. And I said, yes, like I kind of expected from the Bowman Odyssey, a certain level of suffering. Um, <laughs> like to me, it's not an adventure. Like, you know, you're going to probably hate it and want to stop if you're having an adventure at some point. Um, but the part that I really didn't expect was the elements so much. Um, I wasn't quite prepared for just how draining and intense they were. Um, so we had snow, we had rain, we had a 65 mile an hour sandstorm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. That's really crazy. Uh, yeah, the sandstorm was just wicked. I had never really experienced something like that. Um, you know, we came in that night <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, it was day three. So everybody's really tired on day three too. You're like, you're starting to kind of hit your... <laughs> Mm -hmm. your side of fatigue yeah. yeah and um I, I think there was some hope that maybe they'd be like oh you guys gotta go stay in a hotel because it's gotta be safe and you drive up and they're like so there's no dinner we need you guys to sleep in your car here's a cookie have a great night <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> yeah and you're just like what <laughs> oh, um that's gnarly yeah um at least you had a porsche not like a two-door wrangler that's true. Although our Porsche was so packed, we could not recline. <laughs> so it was, you know, airplane uh, oh. sleep mode. But, um, you know, I, I think you just got to make the the best out of that. We, um, you know, we got in our sleeping bags <laughs> and climbed in. That's amazing. And uh, we luckily still had both our tents, which was amazing. Um, we actually ended up giving one of ours to the Volkswagen team because theirs had been shredded. <laughs> oh no. Um, so we also went from driving all day together for 12 to 14 hours to also sleeping in a two man tent together. For <laughs> <laughs> not real close. 14 hours. <laughs> <laughs> we got real close. Uh, um, but yeah, no, you just kind of have to have to joke about it. Like we got in the car that night and you couldn't even see the car in front of you. And um, we were getting ready for bed you know just layering up and um there's literally just sand blowing in through the cracks in the car oh. and i was like do you like some chapstick how about a <laughs> how about a little a little pampering oh can you feel yeah. the sand it's like a exfoliating you know? <laughs> <laughs> fell after it you had white noise going on oh yeah, yeah it's, it's great, great. love to see and the rocking the rocking from the wind it's very low oh. <laughs> dude that is that is something that i deal with all the time like driving to colorado back in the suburban like the night out, the wind was so bad. Like when the steering wheels tilted and you're driving mm. straight, like that, that was fun. sucked. Like, yeah, wind. the wind is no joke. Yeah. <clears throat> we, uh, earlier that day, even before it got to that point, I had gotten out of my car to talk to another navigator and compared notes. And I did like the running man against the wind where I was like, I cannot <laughs> move. Um, Which is a little bit, it, it's a little fun for the first like, 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And then Chris you're, is like, no. your map. I, <laughs> you're like, not my map. <laughs> I, I played in a hurricane in my early twenties and uh, I have a newfound respect for wind. And it always reminds me of a Ron White bit about it's not that the wind is blowing. It's what the wind is blowing. And I had a scuba mask on a raincoat and swim trunks when I did it. And that was not enough. Like, it was <laughs> no, terrifying. no, no, no. You could yeah, jump and no. move distances. Like that's that sounds so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. You see a stop sign go by and you're like, <laughs> okay, Maybe we should go inside. Not fun. Like, yeah. Not fun. Like, yeah. Not fun. We got yeah. cows. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
uh, I saw tumble re- weeds in the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> They're God. not supposed to be there. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, crazy. Yeah. Wind, wind and then the, the sand being in everything was something that being on the East Coast, I'm just not used to as much. And I hadn't expected how, you know, I need to take out my contacts every night, but everything is covered in grit. And so I just didn't. Oh, I just left them in oh, for yeah. days. That's um, the worst. Like just a, like adding solution to your eyeball. Like, just, yeah. yeah. Oh. Keep going. And everything, everything you touch is just covered. You got it in your teeth, no matter how much you brush your teeth. Like it's just everywhere. And that that does oh, yeah. uh, get to you after a little bit. But, yeah. That's like, why is it yeah. still sandy? That's a lot. Yeah. So you got home and immediately wanted to go to the beach and <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> but yeah that's that's crazy so are, are you doing it again now? but then you could at least watch it off. I mean, that's funny. yeah um tbd you know we'll have to see um we'll see if someone wants us to do it again next year <laughs> that's always, <laughs> always a question honestly Fair. um but yeah of course it's like you exfoliated one cayenne we're good right <laughs> that's right yeah, you know it's good when you turn on the like air in the seats and it just poops you know <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you would just know the fan's thing. working we actually sent it back to to Porsche and we were like please watch out for baby scorpions there may be some in there we're not joking so um because they get um, into your gear, and then we sent some of our gear back. That was Porsches, and so we were like, "Just be aware." Heads up, <laughs> might how be there. Like this? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> are baby scorpions venomous, poisonous? I believe so. How do you? I mean, they're creepy. I don't know. I don't they know are creepy out. as hell. <laughs> yeah, right. I was dancing around this up, <laughs> <dancing> around that. <laughs> Lit. Baby scorpions, danger. No, Chris, That's we don't. Fine. We don't. We don't. No, 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 no. No, thank you. Just image I, search. I would like to sleep through um, the night. It is not more dangerous than that of an adult. That's something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, they have a harder time getting the venom in you because they're smaller. But they're also no. I, Okay, that's enough scorpion talk. For <laughs> Dude, enough. ever. You're from the Sorry. East Coast. She's in Tennessee, and I'm in Kansas City. Like, nobody has experience with scorpions on the show right now. No. Other than that. So, <laughs> oh. I mean, yeah. That was, um, yeah, I feel like my two things are, are sorry not to like continue to creep you out. <laughs> no, no, please. Scorpions and tarantulas. <laughs> I, uh, and tarantulas aren't, I mean, they kind of watch out, like, you know, they're there, but they just, bleh, they're just also that there. You guys ran into on the rally? Uh, they are around on the rally. Um, I actually ran into them on the Bowman Odyssey a lot okay. more. Um, it's great when your two-year-old just likes to stick her hands and holes in the ground um, in tarantula territory. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. So we were inside one time. There's one in the campground and Zach was like, let's go check it out. I was like, no, we're never leaving again. Sorry. We're, never, <laughs> yeah. we're not leaving the camper. We're here now. <laughs> this is where we live. <laughs> um, how do you deal with a situation like that? Which one? <laughs> it's just a campground Two-year-old. infested with tarantulas and also <laughs> a small child that wants to either try to play with and or find said fuzzy creatures um i mean you get creative you get a master of distraction both for yourself and the child (laughs) you go to a happy place in your mind (laughs) um (laughs) i feel like chris with the four kids knows what i'm talking about Um, yeah yeah i mean it was hard i think uh i know we're kind of switching from the rebel to the the odyssey but Mm -hmm. um it was hard being hyper vigilant all the time because you are you do have a a not even two year old who's crawling and getting into things and constant. And so that was exhausting in a way that I hadn't expected because you walk outside and you'd be like, I don't even know what's dangerous where I am now. I've gone from one side of the country to another. What can kill me? I can't remember. Um, That's a good point. So was that the most surprising thing about the Odyssey? So just real quick before the answer, just to fill everybody who's listening in, um, the Odyssey was uh basically like a self-sustained year 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 Year. change yeah year-long adventure around the country living out of a ram 2500 3500 ram some kind of ram 2500 2500 
basically a big camper box on the back. And it was four wheel camper. Yeah. It, oh, it was a four wheel camper. Okay. <laughs> How do you never stuff. remember this stuff? I do not. <laughs> I think you make this. <laughs> too many things in my brain. But yeah, it was, you know, it was great to follow along and everybody enjoyed virtually pretending that they were there. So, um, yeah. So was that the most difficult, most challenging, unsuspected thing to kind of have to always monitor? Um, I mean, yeah, I think, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to decide on what part was, was the Fair most enough. unexpected. Yeah, Sorry. It was a tough question, um, but it's a good one. I um I mean, I think that it was more that I had a lot of multiple roles going on at the same time. So I was photographing for the drive um, while being a mom, while nursing, while navigating, (laughs) while, you know, trying to get used to being in a small space with your spouse and one-year-old all of a sudden. Um, And so those were always the moments. It was like when there were just so many things going on um, and you're just uh, really taxed from being monitoring. I think a little known fact is that actually the year we were on the trip, I only slept through the night three times. <laughs> Whoa. What? So I was still waking up and feeding Lucy. So, um, oh, no. so it was just um, exhausting. Um, and it's hard to make good decisions when you're tired or be, be a nice spouse. Um, that's also good. <laughs> yes. I mean, deep is, uh, I can attest to that. Pretty yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, wow. That's, yeah, three nights. Jeez, that's, that's gnarly. Um, that is a great picture. Oh, thanks. Uh, that was Big Ben. That was absolutely one of our favorite places that we went to. Okay, T- tell me a little more about Big Ben because I, I see it. I see it all the time, but I'm like, it's South Texas, right? It is. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like South Texas. <laughs> it doesn't. I think this was surprising. Like in your mind, you kind of have an idea of like what South Texas looks like. And you're like, eh, you know. And it's also, you have to want to go there. Like, it's the only thing there, <laughs> you know, like, um, which I think keeps it also from being overly tourist, like a lot of the other national parks. Um, but what I love about Big Bend is you really have so much variety, both in the park and the landscape and in the ways you can see it. Like, it's super accessible to anybody who wants to see it at varying skill levels. So there's campgrounds, there's a lodge, there's um, backcountry camping, there's um, four-wheel drive courses. You can go back and be the only person for five miles, you know, where you're camping at your campsite. Um, So it's really, I don't know, it's just approachable at so many different levels. And it's a really stunning park, Um, just really breathtaking. So and the stars are the best stars I've ever seen in my life. So really, huh? Of all, yeah. of all, you know, of all the places that we know you went on that adventure, I would not have guessed Texas. Yeah, no, we, um, there was one night we came, we were, I think we were leaving super early or something. We came out, you know, pretty early in the morning. It was still dark. And, um, the starlight was so bright that it cast a shadow like moonlight. It was this that starlight. Intense. Starlight. Okay. Oh. That's, amazing yeah it was very cool so so huh. zach's story about uh that he told on here when he, you guys were at the north rim and it snowed mm-hmm. and you could hear wolves hunting yes i told my dad that story <laughs> right, and he was like when our when our iceland trip got scrubbed uh last fall in 2020 he was like we're going to utah and i was like okay so we stayed in Kanab for a week and went down to north rim bryce um what am i forgetting north rim bryce grand grand oh and we spent a bunch grand of staircase grand escalante Stair- yes it's yeah. the best name <laughs> i know i love i i love utah too God. i mean there's yeah. too many too many places to choose it's that amazing. picture looks like utah that it one was, is actually it was yeah. oh okay well, <laughs> I'll refer nice lead in he got the picture up and then just talk about utah and yeah. then took it away as soon as ross referenced it <laughs> the, the picture of big that i mean that that could have also passed for utah the untrained eye yeah. um but yeah that that was such a cool journey and there was so much you could tell from within the community especially the, you know the car community as a whole and then the off-road community especially there, there was quite a lot of um, envy floating around <laughs> between brains so <laughs> 
it could you... not have been an easy trip, but I felt less no. all the time. No. no, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything you would have done differently? I mean, it really seemed like you were just kind of like, I know it wasn't winging it, but it, it seemed like there was a lot of... No, there was a lot of winging it. There was a lot of winging it. Um, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I'm not a big person who's like, oh, I regret or uh, I look back because I feel like you make the best decisions you can in the moment. Um, but, you know, I sometimes wonder, you know, should we have done it when Lucy was older? Because um, she doesn't remember it. And that was a big part that was hard was you're living in that tiny space with a kid who's still wearing diapers, um, trying to maintain that. And then, um, nap schedule, feeding, traveling. Um, but at the same time that worked for us, like she wasn't in school, she napped a lot so we could get miles down when she was napping in the truck. Um, she was able to sleep pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. She was a great sleeper. So that worked out really well. And we hadn't hit the terrible twos where she was like, I got to get out yet. So um, <laughs> we could just towed her around with us. Um, but there were parts that were hard because we tried to give her a fair amount of um, stability with um, somewhat of a schedule and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so we kind of felt limited, like we couldn't just go out and hike. And, you know, she's not going to hike in 30 degree weather for hours. On end. Right. Why um, not? <laughs> do you want to do that i don't want to do that for hours <laughs> um so so sometimes i wonder about that but i don't know i mean i think there's gear and stuff we might have swapped out differently um but i also kind of i don't know it was you good the way it was i think um yeah yeah you know that's that's the best you can do and our route got changed because of said um drowning in a river. Uh, we had to <laughs> tow Kevin back. Um, so that changed kind of when we hit different parts of the United States. Um, so I'd like to see some of those places at different, you know, times of year, maybe when they're better or different. Um, I don't know, a year is not enough. That's, I think, the crazy takeaway is like a year is not enough to really yeah. see the United States when it seems like such a long amount of time, but it's just not. Mm -hmm. So. It does make me feel a little bit better that you guys dedicated an entire year. And you're like, yeah, it still wasn't enough. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just hard to explain. Um, or or you just don't know. Like, we didn't research place enough, so we hit it in an off season, and it just rained the whole time. So we were like, okay, well, that wasn't great, but it's a great place, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, were you by yourselves while you were there in the off season? Because that's, that's right. the thing that gets me sometimes. I'm like, there are so many people here. I would just love yeah. to not not see people well and there's so many different ways you can do that trip too like uh i'm sure you guys have experienced in um your off-roading that there are different types of people who go to camp for different reasons so there are people who go to camp to be in the middle of nowhere and be alone and then there are people who camp to find you while you're trying yeah. to be alone <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Park right next to you um you're like what so, are you doing you know, all those experiences are so different, just depending how you want to see it. Hmm. So. How, so one of the questions I put in the show notes that, that kind of ties into where we're, where we are and where this conversation goes is how did this whole Bowman Odyssey adventure year of, of challenging yourselves to just keep pushing and then the rebel rally, how does this, how did it like reframe your mind, change your outlook on exploration and adventure? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I should have read it before the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> I like springing it on people. When I get, to get to the questions. It's genuine, the authentic, hard questions. Yeah. I like it. Um, I think when you have done something like sold most of your possessions and planned a trip, um, you realize that you can figure anything out. Um, and that really opens up the possibilities to whatever you want to do. Now, will it be easy and enjoyable the whole time? <laughs> Probably not. Um, but it just gives you so much confidence to be able to try things. And um, I think you learn the scale of your resilience and how to dig deep 
when things are tough and realize that it's just something to get through. Um, and, um, and you get to enjoy it when it is tough at the same time. So. Okay. That's yeah. That's a pretty great answer. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't have anything to come back with on that. that that's... <laughs> I, have, I have a logistic question. Did, did Lucy sleep between you guys? Did you guys have like a baby hammock? Like how? <laughs> So if you look at that picture there, the bed on the right is our bed. Okay. And then to the left that you can't see is the dinette and the dinette folded into um, a bed. However, she was still so tiny, you know, she would just roll off of it. Right. So we actually had one of those little kid pop-up tents um, that we would zip her into and then okay. anchor that to the bed. Because <laughs> okay. oh, we found out she could roll the tent too. Um, so... <laughs> There's actually this picture, it might be on my Instagram, but it's pretty far back. Um, there's a picture of her when we first moved into our rental house right after we came off the trip and she couldn't give up sleeping in her little tent because she was so used to it. And oh, so man. the tent huh. is in a toddler bed. <laughs> oh awesome. my God, that's I mean, <laughs> was... A, adorable and <laughs> B, hysterical. Yeah, so we had to kind of wean, wean, and eventually she got so big for it. She was just, you know, it just forced legs, to get out of the tent. Legs are just yeah, exactly. Out there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's oh, so I'm going to search for this picture the rest of the show. You guys go ahead and keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. First of all, so, you're a very talented photographer because your Instagram yes. is fantastic yes. to look at. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was something else that I did want to touch on. So, you know, everybody claims to be a photographer these days um how just like is it just something that you've always been drawn to or something that you've kind of grown with and into both, both? um Fair. yeah i mean i started shooting film um my parents gave me my first film camera when i was 16 um and i loved just doing it um and then i um was a studio art major in college um, which I told everybody for a long time that the only time I used that degree was when I was cutting paper for people, <laughs> um, which isn't really true. I think studio art does teach you to, um, I don't know, see things in a really broad way and learn how to fix things. I mean, you're running up against deadlines, so you're installing galleries, you're doing all these things. And so it, it makes you think creatively and think, uh, creative problem solving, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so, but I, I, I focused on photography and sculpture in school. And then, um, you know, that was all film too. And then I graduated and they're like, digital cameras are a thing. And I was like, great. I didn't learn anything about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so. Um, I remember that because. It was, was a weird time. Um, I was just going into a dark room. And my dad was like, look at this thing I got. And the, it, the lens flips out and it has this card that goes in. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? What? Come on. I do miss a dark room still. Like, I still very much miss it. Um, but, um, but yeah, so it just, I started shooting from that. And uh, I did graduate during the, the Great Recession. So um, I uh, was just doing it for extra money and had a crappy job and just kept pushing on that. So it kind of developed over time um, good, in that way too. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So any adventures planned? Any Anything in the works or coming up? We are spur of the moment adventure people. So there is always <laughs> an adventure lurking on the, high, on the um, horizon. I think that's another thing you kind of learn is like uh, part of the way that Bowman Odyssey came about. I'm sure Zach has told this story, but um, he just kind of messaged me one day. He was like, what do you think about us living in a camper? And I was like, okay, sure. And, you know, kind of what other, uh, you know, million Facebook marketplace posts have you sent me? Um, <laughs> and then uh, it, like a week later, I was like, so about that living in the camper thing. <laughs> Let's come back to that. Um, so just saying yes, you know, and just kind of seeing where yeah. stuff goes. Yeah. The just say yes thing is, you know, it's kind of something that I'm trying to allow myself and force myself to do because it's so easy to just say, no, I have this other obligation 
and then life passes by and, you know, and you've gone a couple of years without doing anything that you can really like look back on and say, yes, that was rewarding or thrilling or, you know, improve my life some crazy way. So No, absolutely. It's, it is harder. I think than people let on, especially with, with Instagram and stuff. It's so easy to be like, everybody's living this thrilling life. Um, it's not real. It's not. And, and it is hard to make time for it. Um, and I think when you, um, and if you have a partner work fast paced jobs and you have a kid and you have things, it's so easy for that time to just get filled. And so some of it, I do think is stepping back and trying to leave space for adventure mm-hmm. to come up, <laughs> um, and yeah. not trying to constantly fill, which is hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Especially the way things are now, you know, everybody yeah. feels like they have to do everything so yeah i like that that's that's something that everybody needs a little little more of i had a conversation today where i'm not going to do something that i've done for the last two years this spring because i want to have more time like i coached a kid's sport i was the head guy like i i want the time i there's other things yeah yeah. Well, and I think that's the weird, I mean, this sounds like a little, I don't know, out there or whatever. Um, but um saying yes to the things you want and no to a lot of the other things that you don't want to do, right? Like mm-hmm. saying no is also a way to say yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <clears throat> very, very, very fair point. I'm really worried I'm not gonna find this toddler bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I'm, if I can send it to you. <laughs> I'm deep, like I'm at 240 weeks ago. <laughs> well, are, are you in, are you in Virginia? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's a lot of green rolling hills, so. Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, it's black and white. It's me leaning into the toddler bed. Um, mm. Oh, it's black. I don't know and why white. I remember this picture. Mm. I might. I gotta start again because yeah. I was like, everybody's gonna be like, this picture is not worth the buildup. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. That's why it's. <laughs> I'll frame it for you, Chris. It's really just about us. Like the audience is just along for the ride. So as long as we (laughs) enjoy it. (laughs) I'll I'll send it to you and your wife will be like, why do we have this random picture of toddler bed? (laughs) No, your kids are going to be like, dad, who's You trying to tell us something? We were were just discussing toddler beds the other day. So Yeah, man. She's she's aged out of her. Mine? Yeah. Three? Mm, And a half? That's what I thought. And a half, the half matters. Sure. The half matters. The half does matter. But so like three and a half going on nine because she's the youngest of four. So like her vocabulary, mm-hmm. what she does, like that's true. She's yeah. Do you um did you prefer two over three or three over two? Um three is the most stressful number of kids. That sounds like I'm lyric age wise. That's no. one is the lowest number. I'm, I'm at age, not number of children. <laughs> um, so two and three will feel like oh, dreams compared to six, seven, eight. Mm-hmm. Six, seven, eight suck. Mm-hmm. And there's something that happens in third grade for both of my older boys. Something happened in third grade where all of a sudden the switch turned and they weren't as awful anymore Hmm. like they finally have figured out okay this is what i have to do this is what i don't get yelled at for like they finally start to put that mental math together Hmm. um so lucy is about to be seven so to answer your question i'm going on a solo odyssey by myself around (laughs) the rest i'm gonna leave my child for the next (laughs) few years and i'll come back She's uh, great again, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell Zach that Chris told me to do that. So, you know. <laughs> I, I have a seven-year-old too. Chris said, I get it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting out now. No. Yeah. Um, She's about to be seven? Holy crap. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell if it's naturally her, but I do feel like uh, the Odyssey set a precedent for her personality where she just loves being outside. She's a little adventurer herself. Mm. She's just... There is Love probably that. something a hundred percent there built into her if she's used because she was used to like fresh air for almost an entire like a, over a year, right? Like yeah. school classrooms have to just be like the feel of them have to just be awful. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. No, we try to get her outside every day if we can. And she just 
has always been that way. So, which That's aren't right. we all? We should all be getting outside of there. Yeah. I've got a picture of her in a tent, but it's in color. So that's not right. Share with the class, Chris. <laughs> it's a good picture. Like, she's, she's an adorable kid. She's having fun. She's doing what kids do. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And we, uh, that was, I think, early pandemic. And we were like, we need something to do. So we'll set up a tent. I mean, it was, it was super cold or something. So we're like, we'll just sleep inside. Uh, so yeah. work out. It- Anything to change the pace at that point. Yes. Like, see, and that's where uh, I've had pe- a number of people be like, how did you survive the pandemic with four kids? I was like, it's super easy because when they get tired of talking to one, you just take that one and put it with a different one. And then they can talk to that one where you guys, she was always talking to an adult. Yes. Yes. That is I, tricky. I am her playmate as well as her mom, um, which is sometimes tricky. That tent actually is the same tent I had in the Rebel. So it's a pretty oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's how i'll get through this winter i'll just get a tent and put it in my house you you guys know the best the part about today right that's the solstice. days get longer yes yeah, every really day after yeah. today we're adding daylight yeah, that's right i count down to the solstice so do i i, hate, I struggle with the dark <laughs> yeah, i do too i hate the sun yeah. <laughs> worst month yeah, yeah you get presents uh, at the end but like it's so dark yeah, it's yeah. Living up north does not. It sucks this time of year. I will say that was the best part of Glacier in the summer because it was like you had to have your ticket for going to the Sun Road or whatever, and we we did that the days we needed to. But like anytime after six p.m., they didn't care anymore. <laughs> like there's four hours of daylight left, guys. Mm-hmm. It's the middle of the summer. Like oh man, <laughs> I was just watching an old Expedition Overland thing, and they were up like at the top of alaska or something and it was like three or two in the morning and it was still perfectly bright out yeah he's like should we sleep it's 3 a.m yeah (laughs) like so it looks like it's lunchtime but it's actually uh between breakfast and dinner (laughs) that would throw me too though i just feel like i have to get all the things done i have to do everything crazy Um, yeah i think i could do winter better if it wasn't dark all the time right like i can handle the cold part it's just the dark it's like one of the only times of the year that Florida really seems great. <laughs> still not. It's still not though. Still not. No. no, actually, that was that was part of the Odyssey that we we're like, when are we ever going to get out of Florida? It's like once you get into it, it's such a long state. It's it really hard takes to get out of forever. <laughs> yes. I like Florida. I don't know. I I lived in Sarasota. It's five hours to the northern border. <laughs> like, God. And if you go down to the Everglades, you're there, literally. Oh my God. Well, I told you the story earlier this year, uh, between when I was changing jobs, Sam and I went to Florida and we flew into Orlando and, uh, Kia was kind enough to lend us a Seltos. And I told them it was going to be like 200 miles. We were going to Marco Island and I thought Marco Island was like 45 minutes or an hour from Orlando. And it turns out it's like four and a half, five hours from like at 80 miles per hour. It's like I emailed them when I got to the hotel. I was like, I'm so sorry. I don't expect the mileage to be within what the normal limit is. How did, like Google Maps is a thing, man. How did you miss that yeah, dude, so hard? I was, I was speaking like, of navigating. Just, <laughs> uh, it was a big time navigational error on my part. And yeah, there was quite a bit of oversight. And uh, yeah, I was in two really difficult classes. So I wasn't focusing on anything except that. It's but. it's hilarious to me the amount of times I did it with, I think I did it with Zach today, the amount of times I just searched cities on Google Maps. Oh. Like Zach was like, who's near this town in Indiana? And I was like, well, it's I'm eight hours west. I, I had no idea. Like it was just some random. <laughs> I do that almost. 10 times a day. <laughs> it's true. I have this crazy uh, like plug-in on Chrome. So every time I open a new tab, it shows me a random new location on Google Maps. And then it's like, I wonder where this is. And you can't do it. <laughs> Just forgot See, to that, type. That's very distracting. <laughs> it's extremely distracting. <laughs> <laughs> forgot to type in Marco Island. Oh, mm. Beautiful. Uh, also, great place to have panic attack. When you freak out being reintroduced into the world of maskless life. Oh yeah, Florida. Yes. Down there wears masks. 
Tennessee is not great about it either. Right. Sadly. Yeah. You could shocking no one. But. Pick a <laughs> pick a state. Yeah, things are bad up here. Yeah. Um, and as we go into the towards the end of the show here, I, I would like to recommend everybody get their shots or get boosted. And please leave it at that. Absolutely. The good news is uh, I'm not going to watch a football game tonight. So last week we recorded on Thursday. And so then I had to watch the Chiefs game, which went into overtime. So like I didn't start the game until after we got done with the show. So like I started at like 10 p.m. for four hour football game. Nice. So that's rough. That was really, really, you know, you don't have to do that. The good news is I got to fast forward through every commercial break at halftime. So like I did compress it a little bit. So he's still, that's still extremely optional. See, I feel like you two have reached this level of sweet sleep deprivation that doesn't matter anymore. You're just like, just oh, add man. on. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Like I don't. I was working on an article for ATV Rider at like 1245 in the morning last night. I was like, I wonder if I should go to bed. <laughs> Are my words making sense right now? Probably yeah. not. <laughs> like, oh, the guy, Jeff Henson on the on West Coast time has decided to call it a night. I should probably call it a night. You're going to have to send it to me. I can't find it. <laughs> You're still looking? Oh, my yeah. God. I appreciate the dedication. I feel like it's going to be underwhelming. Now I'm just, I don't know. I don't I know just, what I should do. I want to see it. <laughs> I probably have seen it too. That's the worst part. Well, I will find it. it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'm not suffering though because your pictures are great. So, like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Like, that was even just the one off fun pictures are, are well composed. Like, it's good. Well, thanks. Uh, I feel like photographing cars is actually trickier than people for me. So, that's been something I've been trying to learn more about. Which is hilarious because I'm around cars all the time. But. <laughs> uh, controversially, people are more interesting than cars. Mm, controversial. That is it. I don't, I don't think it's controversial. I don't know. <laughs> Some people. Are, I know there's somebody who's going to listen to it and be like, "You said that cars are as interesting as people. What do you mean?" I mean, they're not. Yeah. Uh, the hard thing with cars is like I feel like everybody has the same four angles. Like finding yeah, I- the different angle or trying to find something that doesn't feel like somebody else has taken it yeah no i think that's a challenge like because you know when you see it like photographers who really capture it in motion well different like there's just some aspect and i feel like i'm always uh chasing that a little bit more because i'm relatively new to that um but yeah the just the the side angle (laughs) back front rear detail <laughs> that's, that's pretty standard well like yep. even in motion like the wheels are blurred but the, everything right. else is for like right yeah trying to capture that stuff so hard so anyway i'll stop looking i promise that <laughs> i will post it when i post the show did you find anything else that you liked i found tons of stuff it's okay <laughs> <great>. <laughs> <laughs> the just the one picture. shot like it's you've got a lot of wedding photos which are good so that's but yes, I did. I did. I do photograph weddings, so you know that happens. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> there's also, um, I do also photograph boudoirs, so I'm sure there's some half naked ladies on it. So enjoy. <laughs> there are. I <laughs> <laughs> you didn't screen share those. I did. <laughs> I did throw up an explicit tag. So like, you, know, like it's, <laughs> you can no. say fuck if you want. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Should have cleared that beforehand. I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you're definitely. <laughs> nah. see now i'm all the way out i think i'm in bowman odyssey actually all the time oh sure see that's the other thing like instagram was not what it was when we were doing bowman odyssey and it's crazy to think how different that was mm. what five years ago now um, it's a business now like people yeah live through their instagrams yeah. versus then Absolutely. it was like like a fun thing to you know i'm most uh, pictures on Rust, what what month did you do that last year where you took a break? Was that October? It's mm, a great question. But you, you did spend like 30 days without them. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, it was fantastic. And I, I'm I will, yeah, leaning I will very say, heavily towards it. Yeah, I, um, I think that was something that surprised both um, me and Abby on the Rebel because you don't have your phones at all. Um, and not just be, you know, being off of social was freaking amazing. Um, but it was weird that I think that was the longest I had gone not talking to my daughter or not talking to Zach, um, you know, in any capacity. 
Um, and so that was kind of different, but um, I don't know. I think everybody needs to truly turn off. We really don't do that anymore. Yeah. Mm. That's, I need, that's a, this is one of the problems with the suburban. It, as long as you have a cell signal in the suburban, every device works. <laughs> like it's just, yeah. That's true. It's a weird problem to have. Um, one big fuse away from not having that problem. That's true. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that's tied to. So I might, <laughs> might be losing other systems then too. So. Fair enough. Why doesn't an EBS work? Huh. <laughs> huh. Weird. Can you imagine they tied the 4G? What was, there used to be a, was it a Camaro? You could pull the fuse in the trunk and it would make it louder. Yes. The yeah. baffles. Yeah. <laughs> It's like and anyway. fuse 44 f a or something like that it was it i i have f in my memory as well so yeah the random crap that's in our head so I'm, I'm gonna wrap up the show uh <laughs> you can rate and review the show on itunes spotify spotify's new reviews that just came out this week you can actually rate things on spotify now uh and i guess we all have video versions on spotify as well uh i think i talked about all of that before we started recording um you can like and subscribe on youtube if you do, that's hilarious. Thank you. Because <laughs> nobody does. <laughs> nobody does on YouTube. Uh, you can follow Beth at Runaway Alice, right? Yep. yep. And, and our, at uh, Bowman Odyssey, <laughs> at The Wanderettes. You got it. <laughs> it's the W A N D E R E T T E S. Yeah. Right? Nailed it. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that one, not, it's still not as hard as Ross's. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can, you, if you would like to read more about what I'm now referring to as the dad bourbon. Dad bourbon. <laughs> and I'm the only one with the hashtag. Suck it. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I did a Google search on the hashtag after I started using it, and only my two posts came up, and I was like, nailed it. I find that shocking. Suck it. Right? Same. Like, Same. That, that, that is definitely worse. like air sprayed across the back of a 1987 suburban somewhere down south. <laughs> But yeah, burn. that's probably shag and wagon too. Like that's just, yeah. Anyway, you can, we read what we read on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver. It's, an, yes. it's a, the end of the word alliteration. So it rhymes. That's what that means. Er, er, er. <laughs> Follow us at no, not like the one from friends. You're talking over your own Instagram handle at no, not like the one from friends. And I'm at overlanding dad. And we're done. That's the show. Oh, man. Thank you. Beth. Beth, thank Thanks, you guys. for joining us. That was fun. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's always a train wreck at the end. Yeah. It's a jumble of social medias. We never stick the landing. 